Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Profiles in Literature. Today, we celebrate the fascinating life and times of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, one of England's finest poets. Elizabeth Barrett was born in 1806 in Herefordshire, England. Her early youth was mostly devoted to the study of poetry, literature, and classical studies. She began reading and writing poetry at an early age. And by the age of ten, she had read the complete works of William Shakespeare, Pope, and Milton. In her early teens, Barrett even mastered the works of Greek and Latin authors such as Racine, Moliere, Dante, and all in their original texts. At 15, Barrett suffered a spinal injury while trying to saddle her pony, and seven years later, burst a blood vessel in her chest, which left her with a chronic cough. Both of these conditions would hamper her physical abilities for the rest of her life. When she was 20, she published an anonymous volume of poetry, and almost no one read it. In 1838, she published a third work entitled The Seraphim and Other Poems. The collection garnered critical acclaim, and Barrett became known as one of England's most gifted poets. Soon after her success, she was urged by her physician to move to the southern coast of Devonshire, England. She spent years there as an invalid, but was mostly content until her favorite brother and lifelong companion drowned on July 11, 1840. She considered this death to be the greatest sorrow of her life, and resigned herself confined to her bedroom as an invalid. Despite her physical and emotional state, she was able to continue her studies of literature through generous inheritances from her grandmother and uncle. In 1845, she received a letter from famed poet Robert Browning, which expressed his thorough enjoyment of her work. They continued to exchange letters, and in 1846, the couple eloped and settled in Florence, Italy, where Elizabeth's health improved, and she bore a son, Robert Wideman Browning. During their romance, Bennett Browning wrote a series of poems expressing her heartfelt feelings toward Robert, and in 1850, the poems were published in a collection called Sonnets from the Portuguese, titled after a pet name Robert had for his beloved Elizabeth. The collection featured a poem called Sonnet 43, or How Do I Love Thee, which is arguably her most famous. The poem explores her love for her husband and manages to sum up the universal concept of love in only 14 lines. And the line, I shall but love thee better after death, foreshadowed her own death due to her quickly declining health. In this rare interview, Browning discusses the emotional roots of her famous work of poetry. I tried writing him songs, but but he didn't like my voice, so I wrote poems. While this collection was her most famous, she continued to write poetry, mostly centered around political themes, until her death in 1861. This has been Profiles in History. I'm Dr. Eugene Swedengen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching Profiles in Literature. Up next, it's Please Don't Take My Baby, starring Meredith Baxter Burney as a woman torn between the man she loves and a plot to kidnap her child. On Lifetime, television for idiots.